What's up guys, my name is Siki G and welcome back to another video. Yes, I know we're already in game week three and this is very late, but I promise you I organized these predictions before the first game week. Look, honestly, some of them I would already be changing, but hands up, I'm going to stick to it. These are my Premier League predictions for the 23-24 season. Let's get into this. 20th, Sheffield United. Look, a few seasons ago, they had a decent run under Chris Wilder, but, uh, you know, coming back up from the championship this season, Sheffield United have absolutely no chance. They're in disarray. They don't have the squad to compete. They are just going to be absolutely hopeless. 19th, Nottingham Forest. Look, I don't think Steve Cooper's a bad manager but last season the uh, fact that they signed like 30 players and then just they had to save their skin at the last second I think this year is just going to be building on that I don't think they're going to make any progress they have you know they have cut some dead wood out of their squad but uh, I don't think it's going to save them I think they're going straight back down it's a it's a shame to see such a big club go back to the championship especially if they're going to be replaced with some yo-yo club like Watford or something like that. I don't think it's looking positive for them this year, so 19th. 18th, Luton Town. Yes, one of the biggest stories of the championship last season was the fact that Luton Town won the playoff game to come to the Premier League for the first time. Little old Luton. So much was made on social media of their their stadium. In fact, I still don't think uh, they're allowed to play in it. I don't think it's meeting Premier League standards. They've had to do a lot of work to it. You basically have to uh, go through someone's living room to get into the stadium. Very characterful little stadium and, uh, uh, you know, a great small club. I don't think they're going to come dead last. I think some of that small club kind of mentality, you know, the togetherness, the community of the club might get them to win a few matches, especially against the bottom half opposition. But I think they are still unfortunately going to be relegated back down to the championship. But I think it's going to be a hard fought relegation. I think they're going to put up a good fight. But they just won't have the substance within their squad to be able to stay up. 17th, Wolves. Oh my god, Julian Lopetegui leaving Wolves like five minutes before the season started completely sent that club into a spiral. They sold their best player as well to the uh, Saudi league. The whole club seems to just be in a spiral of what is going on. They've managed to get a decent manager back in and uh, look, they haven't looked too bad I suppose but um, I don't think they're going to get relegated but mainly just because there's three worse clubs than them I still think they're pretty bad they're going to have a terrible season and it's 17th which is not good by Wolf's recent standards 16th Fulham second season syndrome is going to hit a little bit for Fulham but not to the full extent that they get relegated I think they've got a decent squad they played really well last year uh, under Marco Silva they've started off well again this year and I think that's going to continue I don't think they're going to reach the heights of last season I don't think they're going to be challenging for Europe or anything like that but I think they're going to stay comfortably in uh, in the Premier League and maybe they can build on that next season 15th Burnley. Vincent Company's Burnley is the one that everybody's talking about coming up from the championship. 101 points in the championship winning season last time out and they're playing a beautiful free-flowing brand of football akin to Pep Guardiola more than it is to the old Sean Dyche era at Burnley. Vincent Company's completely transformed the team. They've been given new license and I think they are going to make a little bit of a, an impact in the Premier League. I think they'll stay up. I just don't think they're going to, you know, finish closer to the top half as some people might be thinking but I definitely don't think they're going to go straight back down again we'll see what they can do improving on that next season whether they uh, get hit with second season syndrome or whether they can solidify their place in the prem but I think company's going to be doing a great job they're still a small club so 15th would be a very good result for them. But yeah, Mega Minds at the wheel. 14th, Everton. This is one of the ones that I am starting to regret slightly. Everton have been, well, dog shit for the last couple of seasons. First under Rafa Benitez, then under Frank Lampard, and now under Sean Dyche as well. They've uh, played three, lost three, scored none, conceded six. It's, uh, it's not looking good, and this is definitely one of the predictions I wish I could change, but I can't. So let's give my initial reasoning. Uh, Sean Dyche is a decent manager. Everton actually have a decent squad, apart from a striker and perhaps a centre-back. Two crucial positions, but nonetheless, they have a good squad around that. They just don't seem to be able to gel together. They're a big club. They've never been relegated from the Premier League. They've got a good fan base, you know, decent atmosphere at the stadium and everything. They're going to be backed by the fans. 
It's just, it's going to be a rough one for them this year. They need to improve on last season's 17th. 13th, Bournemouth. Bournemouth have been a surprise package. Most people were expecting them to get relegated last season. So for them to still be here is a plus. For me to be predicting them to finish 13th is insanely good. And, you know, they're proving me kind of right. They're playing okay. They don't have a star-studded squad, but uh, they're making use of what they have. And uh, I think 13th is pretty fair. They're playing a nice little brand of football. They might sneak a draw here and there with some top teams, but uh, I think 13th is a good season for Bournemouth. 12th, Brentford. Yes, without Ivan Tony for six months, it is going to be tough for Brentford. But they're proving that they've still got another 10 players on the field without him. Well, actually 11, because he's not on the field. But you know what I mean. They're proving that they've got a squad that isn't just Tony's team. They started off as similar to Luton, where one of the much smaller London clubs in the Premier League when they joined up. They didn't get hit with second season syndrome, and now they're trying to be here to stay. I think 12th is going to be a very good season for them. If they can stay around that mid-table for a little while, then they can start to uh, try and improve on that. But solidifying their roughly mid-table stature would be a good first step for them. 11th, Crystal Palace. Well, this one's basically a given because Crystal Palace finish in like 10th, 11th or 12th every single year. They've always got 49 points. It's basically guaranteed that I'm going to get this one right. Even without Wilfred Zaha, they're probably going to finish in 11th. Roy Hodgson has brought back some of the solidity and defense. They've managed to secure Michael Elise to a new contract despite interest from Chelsea and Man City, uh, one of their key playmakers. And they've got Eberichi Eze and, uh, you know, other silky smooth smooth players that they can dribble some uh, success into their team. Uh, but they are just one of those clubs that is somehow happy to sit 11th every single year. They're never going to get relegated, but uh, they're never going to push further than that. Anyway, they're kind of just a nothing club. All right, and now into the top 10. 10th, West Ham. Despite selling Declan Rice for 105 million of those pounds, I still think West Ham are going to have a good season. I think signing James Ward-Prowse was a great solution to the problem. They've got a great player in him, and he's going to be a good uh, good leader in the dressing room as well. And uh, they've been pretty shrewd in the transfer market this time out. I think David Moyes is going to do much better than he did last season when they were sort of scrapping relegation for a bit. I don't think they're going to do as well as they did a couple of seasons ago, challenging for Europe, but I think 10th is going to be very solid. They can build on that next season. Ninth, Aston Villa. Unai Emery has basically torn Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa to shreds and started again with his own game plan. And my God, is it working? They are looking on fire at the moment. They've even got Luca Dean playing well. Despite Coutinho's hamstrings being made of celery, they, they've still got a great squad. Ollie Watkins is firing. I think they're going to go on to have a good season. They do have European football, which is going to hamper them a little bit. But I still think they're going to have a solid Prem season. Eighth, Tottenham. Celtic success, Aussie manager Ange Postacoglu is changing Spurs. Despite selling Harry Kane, they are looking much more fluid and much more confident than they were before under previous managers. I think Ange is cooking something up, uh, something nice up. I don't think they're going to go on to be able to sustain that throughout the season. I think they're going to have a drop off somewhere, but he's definitely building something nice to look forward to in the next few seasons. I think eighth would be not too bad. Give him some time. They'll be definitely back up in the top six soon. Seventh, Brighton. Yes, I know it's a very mainstream pick to put Brighton up here, but god damn are they good. Roberto De Zerbi, I, I don't know what sort of magic they have in Italy, but he's he's definitely sniffing all sorts of it because he's turned Brighton insane. Um, losing McAllister, losing, losing Caicedo, it doesn't matter. They've got players in the pipeline just to squeeze straight through into the first team. Karu Mitoma, what a genius. Uh, they, they look so fluid already in the first couple of games. They do have European football for the first time, so it's going to be something different. Again, they're going to have tired squad It'll hamper them a little bit. I don't think they're going to start pushing for Champions League places or anything like that. But seventh for Brighton and Hove Albion, definitely a success. Sixth, Chelsea. 
Maurizio Pochettino is back, baby, and he's bringing his football to the other side of London with Chelsea. They looked exciting in preseason. Even uh, Mudrik was scoring. Mm. They've got a £200 million midfield of, of Enzo Fernandez and Moise Caicedo. They've got Mudrik, Sterling. They bought a new striker in Nicholas Jackson. Pochettino is bringing Pochball back to the Prem, and I think they're going to have a decent season. They're not going to struggle like they did last season in 12th or whatever. But I don't think they're going to push for Champions League places just yet. Fifth, Newcastle. Who would have thought that Newcastle United, when they hired Eddie Howe, would be in the Champions League? I think most people were still expecting them to get relegated. Not just the Saudi takeover, but the appointment of Eddie Howe and his insanely energetic style of football has just transformed Newcastle. They're insane at the moment. I honestly probably should have put them higher, but I just think maybe they can't challenge the big four yet i think they're one step away maybe definitely having champions league football uh, for the first time in a while might uh, might throw a, a spanner in the works but maybe not you know they have a decent squad they've got a lot of players who have played european football before which is nice for them and uh, i think they they're going to have a good another good season fourth Liverpool. Yes, I think it's going to be a rocky season for Liverpool. Again, they didn't have the best season last season. I think that's going to carry on into this season. Something is changing there. They're in that sort of rebuild phase where they've lost their amazing team of, you know, 2019-2020 with Salah and Mane and Firmino. Two of the three are gone. One of them reportedly wants to leave. Pretty much their whole midfield is gone now as well. And Trent Alexander-Arnold looks like he's never seen a football in his life. They're going to probably win a lot of good games well. And they're probably going to lose a lot of games pretty badly just because of the style. I think if they get it right, they're going to get it really right. And if they get it wrong, they're going to get it really, really wrong. Third. Man United. Eric Ten Hag has unceremoniously thrown David De Gea out of the window and uh, brought Eric, uh, Andre Onana through the door. That's just one of the transfers that he's making in order to make Man United the best transitioning team in the world. He's still trying to bring his style of football into Manchester, um, and I think they're going to get the same as last season, a third place where they were never really going to challenge for the titles. They're still looking solid and ready to build on in future years, hopefully to challenge for the top places. Second, Arsenal. Yes, The Apprentice still falls short for at least one more year. Arsenal are probably my favorite team to watch, maybe even more exciting to watch than Man City. They have such an exciting young team with Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli, really good players. Arteta is working magic there, but... You saw by last season when they crumbled under that bit of pressure. They're just not ready yet. Maybe they need one win to kick it all off. Maybe they need to win uh, an FA Cup or something like that to, to just get that feeling of holding on even through the last moments. Maybe they need that before they can start winning the Prem, but they just don't have that edge just yet. And that, of course, leaves us with the champions, Man City. Yes, I know it's boring as hell, but I think Man City are going to win again. I think Erling Haaland is probably going to score another 50, 90, 100 goals. Even though they're missing De Bruyne now for a good few months, they've got so they've, their squad depth is insanely good. They can just chuck anyone in there and you pretty much won't notice that the team is different. When you watch Man City versus when you watch Arsenal, you really can see the difference. One is uh, an exciting young group of, of talented players that are working very nicely together to challenge for a title the other is a team of experienced titans who have won title upon title upon title and are relentless and ruthless they are the max verstappen of the premier league world it's hard to see them not winning again this year i don't think they're going to go on and win the champions league or anything like that again but uh it doesn't matter because this is not champions league predictions this is prem predictions and those are mine uh leave your feedback and your thoughts in the comment below who do you think is going to get the top four who do you think is going to get relegated which of my predictions are wrong which are correct hint it's all of them if you did enjoy please give the video a big thumbs up subscribe to become a g because that is epic and i'll see you next time back up on my feet and now i'm walking the right track ignoring internals red flag and no right back i walk a booking eyes peeled and looking double 60 in the whip it's too late if the white flash the light